All right, we are going to do as quickly as possible uh, a run through of this homework that you got at the end of class today. Um, I had hoped that it was going to be classwork, but the quiz took way longer than I expected it to. So, so um, we're going to go through this as fast as we can. So, so hold on, get ready. Um, this first page is just showing us. Um, representations that we're going to use to answer the questions on the second page. So if I were you, I'd actually rip off that top page so that you can look between it and the questions. So you're not having to flip back and forth all the time. So um, onto the questions. Question number one, locate the circled molecule of RSQ in model one. There it is. Uh, question 1b, how many atoms are in a molecule? Well, we have one, two, two atoms. Um, find the circle of molecule of T, S, Q, 2, R, that's going to be uh, right down here. So here we have a molecule. Um, how many different kinds of atoms do we have? Well, we have three, one, the squares, two, around, three, a triangle, three different kinds. Um, and then, sorry, um, I lost my place on the paper. 2B, how many square SQ atoms are there? There are two. We have one square, two squares. All right, moving on to question number three. Locate the drawing labeled SQR3 and TSQ. It's asking us um, how many different kinds of atoms we have. Of course, we have triangles, squares, rounds. Well, there's squares again, there's rounds again, triangles again. So you have three different kinds of atoms. How many kinds of molecules do we have? Well, we have these guys, triangle squares, and these guys, rounds and squares. Um, what's holding the um, atoms together? As it says right here, chemical bond. Um, can a particle be a single atom? Absolutely. Here, we have a picture with an atom that's a particle. Can a particle be a molecule? Yes, this one tells us we have particles. Each one of these particles is a molecule, not an atom. How many particles are in the drawing represented in this picture here? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight particles. And what's our definition of a particle? It's just a small unit of matter. Um, either an atom or a molecule. In those molecules, the atoms have to be stuck together with chemical bonds. Um, 6A, what are the letters R, S, Q, and T in the codes represent? Of course, they are atoms or elements. Um, what are the small numbers, the subscripts, kind of like this two right here? What do they represent? Of course, those are the numbers of that kind of atom in each molecule. When the atoms are touching, how is that communicated in our codes? We have no spaces between the letters of the code. And then the common characteristic in which we have an ampersand, that's an ampersand, we have more than one kind of molecule. So we have this kind of molecule, we have that kind of molecule, not all the same. Um, and then finally, 6E is asking us to write codes for the question marks. This guy clearly is all triangles, is going to be a T. This guy, we've got a square and three rounds, so SQR3. And last but not least, we have round and square two. Um, so those are our uh, unlabeled samples. Question number seven says to chop these apart and start to sorting, to start sorting them into all identical particles and then different kinds of particles. I'm not actually going to cut apart my computer screen. Um, you can do that if you want to, or you can just sort them in your mind. That's totally fine. Uh, that read this blurb under question number seven gives us some good definition. So a pure substance is one in which we have all the particles identical. A mixture, we're going to have different kinds of particles present. So, so sorting into my pure substance, whoa, pure starts with a P, not an R. Pure substances versus mixtures. R, all R is going to be pure. This guy, I've got three different kinds of uh, sample particles. So that one's going to be a mixture. This one is all the same. This one, all of the
those molecules are the same. This one, again, they are all the same. Here, one more time, all the same. This one, I got two different kinds, and so it's going to go over here in mixture. Another one where all of these molecules are the same. And finally, I have yet another ampersand. So these guys are going to be in the mixture column. Um, question number nine, how are the codes for pure substances different? Well, these guys have no ampersand. These guys all definitely do have that ampersand to let us know we have different kinds of particles in that sample. Um, now we're going to start sorting just our pure substances. If you look at that, read this under question number 10. Um, elements are pure substances made from only one kind of atom, whereas our compounds are two or more. So looking at just our pure substances, we're not worried about our mixtures right now. Looking at just our pure substances, um, which are elements and which are compounds? Well, this guy is all by himself. It's just round. He's an element. The T's also all just triangles is going to be in, whoa, element. Here, that is still kind of crazy. Sorry. Let me fix that a little bit. I think I made it worse. Anyhow, moving on. Uh, SQR3. SQR3, we have rounds and squares. So now I have a compound. I have two different kinds of atoms chemically bonded to each other. Same thing for this one. I have a compound. SQ2, you're like, oh, look, there's some chemical bonds. It must be a compound. It's in fact an element because we have all the same kind of atom. They're all squares. This is an element. Um, and then this one, our T, SQ2R, of course, is going to be a compound. Um, how are the codes different? Just one. You're going to want to say letter, but this one actually is two letters. But we have the same uh, symbol, only one symbol um, for those atoms, um, whereas our compounds are going to have multiple symbols. Um, question 13 asks us to identify whether um, these uh, real su substances are elements or compounds. Um, and I'm actually going to let you do that on your own. I'm going to post the answer key to the whole poll, so you can go back to that and check your answers. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to question 14. Difference between an atom and an element. So an atom is one piece of an element whereas the element is going to describe any and all particles of that type, that atom. Um, the difference between a molecule and a compound, of course, the molecule is just one piece of the compound, whereas the compound um, is representative of any and all particles that are atoms bonded together in exactly that arrangement of molecule. All right, moving on to question number 15. Um, it's useful to separate matter. Physical methods, so it's really important to think about physical methods of separation, um, don't require chemical change. And so this is using um, filters or um, magnets. It can be dissolving stuff to separate it. Um, no chemical bonds are broken. We're not changing any of the chemicals. We're just moving them away from each other. Um, chemical methods of separation, however, do require a chemical change. We take one substance and turn it into different substances. So this is chemical change because we change the chemicals. Um, 15A asks if straining cooked pasta from water is physical or chemical. Of course, this is physical. Cooking the pasta, you could argue, involves some chemical changes, but they are mostly still just physical. Um, um, baking the pasta actually has quite a few chemical reactions going on. Um, how about 15B, using a fuel cell to separate water into hydrogen and oxygen. Since I'm breaking that compound down into new substances, elements, this one actually is a chemical separation. 15C, what kinds of matter can we separate physically? That's going to be mixtures only. And then what types of matters can we separate chemically? 
um, that's going to be compounds. So compounds we can send through chemical changes to turn them into their um, base elements. So question 16 asks us to look at these drawings. Um, which one is the better element? Clearly, drawing A is an element, um, is a better representation of an element because we have particles that are all the same making up the element. This one isn't really an element because it's just one atom. So not an element, just the atom, the smallest piece of that element. Um, question 16B asks us to imagine that this atom was chemically separated from one of the guys that was on the previous page. Which one of these samples of matter could have been the source of the atom in B? It was a circle. So clearly, if we went through a chemical, um, oh, sorry, physical, physical separation, um, it could be this one because we could totally pull an R out of this sample. Not this one because they're chemically bonded to each other. Not this one, they're chemically bonded. This one, we could totally physically separate that round from the squares. Um, and that one's it. Well, I guess you can't really physically separate an atom from its element, but maybe. So maybe you could argue just the R. Um, and that is the end of our Pogel. Quick and easy. As I said, I will post the answers on Classroom so you have those to check. And uh, happy evening.